Now the verse parts, when he's doing the verse, there's a lot of variations in the song, and I'm not musical enough to be able to tell you exactly what they are in the right terminology. I'll just kind of do it very simply, but when he finishes the introduction, he does this. And then he goes into the A7, A long A, A7 vamp that he uses throughout the tune. When I hear this, I hear a lot of variations, and I haven't got them all figured out. When I play this, I just kind of play what feels right at the time. But he's got this A7 shape, and he's got the bass working, the open fifth string and the fourth string. So you just get that going. And try some variations where you're moving your, from your pinky, that long A, to an A7. And back and different patterns, hold it for different lengths of time. Listen to how he does it and you'll get some ideas on the variations. So the first part of the, of the, of the lyric, when he starts singing, he's playing over this. Some form of that, the long A. And then he's going to go D7. D7, G7, C. So let me play one of these, these uh, guitar parts over the, or behind the vocal. So what I'm doing here, got the D7 with the fifth and fourth string bass. I'm going to my G7, and then do a G. So instead of putting the pinky down first and then the first finger, we're doing it the other way. First finger, G7 to a G, and then back to our C in my bass. You can either move that finger back and forth, the third finger between the third fret of the fifth string and the sixth string, or you can get it on both. Some guys can do that. I have skinny fingertips, and so it's harder for me to do that, so I just kind of move it when I have to. And then he does it again. And that's, uh, the pattern that he plays behind most of the vocal parts. So that's that part. Now when he gets in to the rest of the song, there's a couple variations, and let me go through those with you right now. So one is when he gets into this, uh, goes like this. He's like, uh, talking about the Georgia rag, yeah, that Georgia rag, that Georgia rag. Buzzing around like a bee, that part. I'm not a singer, or else I'd sing it for you. So what he's doing there, he starts out on the A. And he's going to go to a D minor. And what I'm doing here, got my first finger on the first fret of the first string, my third finger on the third fret of the second string, and my second finger on the second fret of the third string. It's a D minor, and he's playing around with that first finger. So the bass, again, is the open fifth and the open fourth, as far as I can tell. And he's doing some pull offs Some stuff there that I have not figured out yet. So the, the song goes from here. Then he's going to go to a G. To a G7. So it's like I gotta play it in context. That's it. So he's going from a G, holding it on the G seventh. I got a six four bass. It's like this. Something very close to that, if it's not exactly that. And he's gonna go to an E. So now we've got an E chord. 
and I'm playing it with two fingers where I've got my first finger on the first fret of the third string and my second finger is getting both the fifth and fourth strings at the second fret. So we've got this. And I'm pinching the sixth and the first strings. And then I'm doing a hammer on on the first fret of the third, st third string. And then I'm bringing my pinky down to the third fret of the second string, which is an E7. So I'm doing some moving around in that E chord. So let me play it slowly. And my bass on the E is 6-4. This part's kind of a, a pinch. You just have to practice that and try to get the timing. I wish I was good at the acoustic tabs. I could tab this out for you. And from that, he's going to go to an F. And so this is where the song gets a little tricky. So let me play that last part again. We've got an F, which is kind of tough because what you've got to do is put your thumb to get the first fret of the sixth string, your bass, and that's a six four bass, sixth string, fourth string, and we're making an F chord shape. I'll have all these chords diagrammed out for you, and if you don't know your F chord, you should probably learn that before you try something like this. So he's going to go from an F to a C diminished. At least that's what I hear. This chord's kind of tricky. Got my first finger on the second fret of the third string. Got my second finger on the third fret of the fifth string. My ring finger's on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And my pinky's on the fourth fret of the second string. But I'm getting the middle part of this. I'm not getting the first string or the sixth string. And my bass is the five and the four. And I'm pinching the second string and the fifth string. So it goes from the F to that chord. So you'll have to play around with that and get it. So it's F, and I'm pinching to start out that chord, to lead into it. And then we go back to our C. those, same bass, all that, and then we hold on to D7. Let me play the whole thing in context again, so let's take it from the very start of this part. That I hear, I hold here for one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to my G seventh G. Back to my C. And then into the regular verse. So let me play that whole part again. This is the part where he does the buzzing around like a bee. That's how I always remember it. So it's um into it. So there is the next part of Blind Willie McTell's Georgia Rag. The next thing we'll take a look at with Blind Willie McTell's Georgia Rag is what I call the solo. Where he plays a little guitar solo. And he does this. He starts in the C.
plays that twice throughout the song. And what he's doing here is starting out in the C. He's going to go to an F. Where he's taking his pinky in an F shape and bending up on the third fret of the second string. So we've got this. Whoops, let me try it again. Like that, that's the timing. So it's... That one's tough, and if you bend it too far, at least with my 12 string, which is a, a low-end guild, I paid about six, seven hundred bucks for this, but I like the sound and it plays well. But if you don't bend it just right, it's, it sounds funky, doesn't sound right. So you, what I found is just bend a little bit. So like this. You know, barely bending it. And we're just keeping the bass going 6-4 while we're doing that. I'll listen to the original tune and you'll get the feel. That's where I learned this part from. Then he's going to go back to his C. Then he's going to do this. Where he varies the picking. One, two, one, two, back to the one. So, the whole thing. Let's do it. So it's... So on the D7th, we've got our 5-4 bass to the G6-4, back to the C. One more time, slowly. one other part in the song, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's, I think he sticks on the E, the A7 part, and then goes directly to the E, instead of that, doing the D, the D minor, G run. So listen for that, it's just the A to the E, and then he goes into this. That same chord progression that we did earlier. Now the last part of the song, which is kind of fun, is the end tag. And he's got a really cool little end tag here. I can't, I think I got the thing note for note. If not, I'll, ha I'll act, at least tab this part out for you. And I'll tab what I can. I'll, I'll try to work on this. I've never, you know, done a tab with this complicated of a finger picking song. It takes so long and I just don't have the time right now. But anyway, he does, let's just take you through a verse and we'll do the end tag. Something very close to that. And what he's doing out of a C, it's three, two, one, open on the first strings. And then he's going to get a slight bend on the fourth string of the fourth fret of the second fret with the open first string. So that first part, and then he's going to get second string first fret to the third string second fret. So. And then right here, I think it's a. The C, the third fret of the fifth string, and then a hammer on, out of a C chord position. I'm just taking everything else off except the first finger, hammering on the second fret of the third string to the second string, which is still fretted there at the first fret. So what I hear at the end. something very close to that. 
I'm going to leave you here at the end. Uh, a couple of years ago, my brother and I recorded a version of this song at the Muscle Shoals studio, the famous Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. It's a long story, but we had an opportunity to record a CD there, which we haven't had time to get put out yet. But I'm going to include the Georgia Rag that we recorded, which I kind of like. And it has me playing the whole song through the way I play it. Not exactly like Blind William McTell played it. You can find that and listen to that too. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It's a great song. Whether you play it on a 12 string or a 6 string, it's still, still a cool song. And if you're into 12 string, it's really fun. I've been listening to a lot of Blind Willie McTell, a lot of Lead Belly, and anyone else I can find who plays a 12 string. Some Robert Jr. Lockwood from a little bit later. Some of his acoustic stuff on 12 string is really cool. And it's fun. It's just a different sound, different style. And if you're into it, give it a shot. It's fun. And this lesson is, is for you. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back again in a couple months with another acoustic lesson. We'll go back to the sixth string. And until then, take care, and I'll see you again. Goodbye. In Atlanta on Harris Street, that's where the boys and girls all meet. Do that rag, that Georgia rag. Down the alley and in the street. Every little kid that you meet Do that rag, that Georgia rag Well, you buzz all around like a bee I shake it like a ship on the sea Wild rag, crazy rag Better known as the Georgia rag Crazy rag, known as the Georgia rag.